This video will demonstrate how to use DDT, the uh, Parallel Debugger, which is a graphical tool that allows you to debug OpenMP and MPI threads, and future versions will support debugging uh, GPU code. In this case, we're only going to look at MPI in very simplistic cases. Uh, first off, we need to be able to log in using X forwarding. I'm doing this from a Mac where this is built in. To do it from a Windows machine, refer to one of our other videos. First thing, make sure that the DDT module is loaded. Uh, if not, you just need to run module load DDT. Refer to our webpage for documentation on how to use the module system. So then you can just type DDT to start it up. Uh, for small cases, running DDT on one of the login nodes is fine. Uh, this is what DDT looks like. For uh, larger problems, you'd want to run it through an interactive job with X40, and I'll show you how to do that next. So I'm going to start an interactive job using Q sub minus capital I. I'm also going to throw on the minus capital X option to enable X forwarding through Q sub. Then uh, I'm going to go ahead and submit to my flux allocation. And I'm going to go for uh, uh, I'm going to go for two nodes uh, with uh, eight CPUs each. Mine's capital V and the one hour default time and memory use for our examples will be fine. So I'll wait for this to start. Okay, so now that our job started, we'll see that I have the uh, um, 16 CPUs I requested. They're on two different nodes. DDT is actually smart enough to know uh, t it just uses the underlying MPI library and hooks into it. So any code compiled and run the normal way will just work. Uh, so I have some example MPI codes here. Um, first, I'm going to clean them out. To be able to actually debug with DDT, we need to enable debug symbols. Uh, generally, you want to disable optimizations too because the compiler will rewrite uh, some code internally and variable names and functions won't necessarily make sense. Uh, so disable all optimizations and throw on the minus G flag which on all compilers uh, enables debugging symbols. This will allow you to be able to see the source code inside the debugger when it's running. Uh, there are other options, um, like for example with the PGI compilers you can do minus G opt which will enable debugging with optimization, uh, but generally you don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and build this code. Um, I have a couple of different codes here, I'm going to start with some very simple ones. But what we're going to do here is we're going to run DDT, the executable we wish to run. So in this case I'm going to run this C Hello World program. The first time you start DDT it's going to ask you to create a new configuration or import an existing one. Uh, go ahead and say create a new configuration. Uh, let's leave it, set the um, MPI library you're using to open MPI as this is the version that's on uh, Flux. And it will take a second to do some stuff. Um, you can pretty much just wait this out and then ignore it. Uh, when it kicks up this message here, go ahead and hit cancel. Uh, and it says remote execution mechanism failed. That is fine. Don't worry about that. Go ahead and click next. Uh, and then say skip this step for job scheduling because we're going to use interactive jobs instead of having DDT submit jobs for us. And next, and then site wide configuration to say skip, next, and then finish. Uh, that's the only time you'll ever have to run that. But then once it's done, uh, the main DDT window will pop up as well as a welcome screen. The welcome screen is the first place you start. Uh, here you say, what you want to start. So I'm going to say that I want to run and debug a program. 
because I specified the program when I started DDT, uh, it's going to automatically be filled in. If it needs any arguments, I can put those here. I can also use DDT for non-MPI programs. If it's not MPI based, I can just click run without MPI. Uh, then I set the number of CPUs. In this case, I'm going to start with a simple four CPU job, even though I've requested 16. I'm going to use only four. And it is also not an OpenMP code. Uh, there's some other options here in memory debugging. Um, memory debugging, you can set that and it will tell you information. If you're getting things like seg faults and stuff, it'll give you some more information. Uh, but any type of memory debugging slows down execution significantly. That said, debugging things run a lot slower. So I'm going to not enable memory debugging. So I'm going to go ahead and say run. And we'll see that it's starting it up on the four CPUs. And I actually see my source code here. Uh, different source files will be open across the top, and you can actually view source trees on the side. But uh, this is a single source file application. Uh, there's some information on the side. On the current line that you're on, uh, it'll show any variables on that line and its current values. The stack, the way you can think of the stack is the function you've called. So you start with your program, which in C is um, main. And then in Fortran, it's actually also main. And then the next function you call will go, be pushed onto the stack, and you'll be inside that function. And the next function it calls will be pushed onto the stack. You're inside that function until that function returns, and you go back to where that function was called in the previous function. The stack will let you be able to select. So when you're wondering where a given function was called, you can just click on the next element in the stack above it and it will take you there to that line in that source file and show you and you can use the current line and local variables to look at what the different variables were set to when that function was called so there's different ways currently the programs paused you can see that I have four CPUs assigned here um, I can either step step over or step out step over will just go step into will go into the next line if it's a function it will go into that function step over will execute that function but not actually go into it line by line step out will have you exit out of that function it will finish and go back to where it entered you can also just hit play here which will just run your application if I do that in this case it will just finish uh, any messages that the code would normally print out would be on this input output tab you can also see all your listed breakpoints. Breakpoints are places you want your code to pause. So if I wanted my code to pause here, I can just double click there. I create a breakpoint. If I hit play, the code will run until it gets to that point. And it will say code process stop that breakpoint. You can pause or continue. Pause will actually stop it. But notice this. One, two, and three of my CPUs in this four CPU job have um, are actually still running. That's why they're green. Only CPU 0 is actually stopped on this line. The reason is this way this code is written, CPUs 1 through 3 skip over this part, so only CPU 0 ever got here. The other CPUs are somewhere else. If I hover over this line, you'll see that on this line, one thread process zero, so CPU zero is there. I can see where the other ones are. If I pause, they will also stop, and you'll see this highlighted line here. In this case, this is where CPUs one through three currently are. And I can click on them, go to current line, see its stack, etc. I can go back and forth between these. Um, Breakpoints can also have a condition. I could say only stop here if X was greater than six or something like that. But that's the basics of debugging. I can just go ahead and click, and it says it's finished because this code finished without any errors. And I say start from beginning. No, but if I look at my input output, we see this is the messages that my code prints out. So let's try using a different code. I'm going to exit out of this current one. And I'm going to run a code that locks up in communication. I'm going to say run and debug. I'm going to run this on four CPUs. Now this code, CPU 0 is going to try to pass to CPU 1. 1 is going to at the same time try to pass to 2. 2 is going to try to pass to 3. And 3 is going to try to pass back to 0. 
Uh, this is invalid MPI for small data values. This will actually work because of buffering, but for larger values, it won't, and the code will sit there and spin for forever. So I go ahead and click run. And it starts up on the first line. I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and we'll see that this code will sit here and just run, 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 run. If I hit pause, we see that um, one CPU is on this line, but that the other CPUs is down here and if you notice here if you ever get any of these PML OB1 or BTL SM component these are actually from the MPI libraries that's because if I go back to my first line if I go to main we'll see that they're actually calling send every CPU is calling send see if I hover over this 0 through 3 all four CPUs are on send and this is my stack so see it called main called MPI send which then calls these other functions so why is it stuck here I can actually look at something called the message queues the message queues say who's trying to send to who so this is if you have posted receives and sends so if I go and view and I click on message queues we will see that in MPI com world zero is trying to send to one One's trying to send to two, two's trying to send to three, and three's trying to send to zero, but it hasn't actually happened yet. So this is what the message queues look like. Obviously, it's a very simplistic case. It's just a ring, but in a more complicated case, you would maybe have receives, CPUs waiting to receive messages, and then uh, unexpected messages as well. You can also look at these in table format, so you can see that this send from one is trying to send a two, three is trying to send a zero, zero is trying to send a one, two is trying to send a three. So this will help you debug a deadlocked code where you have MPI just hanging. So that's some of the ways you can use DDT. You can also view other information. You can do the multi-dimensional array viewer where you can look at the value in arrays. You put it in there in uh, array format. Um, in both six, both C and Fortran formats. You can put it in there uh, and actually see what it looks like. You can also do um, the cross process comparison. This is the same thing. You put in variables and what we'll do is it will show you the value of that variable across the different CPUs. So you can just put in uh, a variable into there. If it's an array, it'll be expandable, and you can just look at what they are. You can also quickly keep track of certain variables, what they look like. Uh, just drag them from the current line down to the evaluate, and it'll show you which one's what. Uh, you can also step using the step functions and such uh, individual CPU. So right now we do this focus on group, which you can make multiple groups of CPUs. Uh, and there's a default one called all that has all of them, or you can do a single process. So in this case, I can take a single process and step just it and not the rest of them. So that's pretty much it uh, when you're done exit. DDT and exit out of your interactive job. Again, you can run DDT on small problems that use small bits of memory on the login nodes, but otherwise you need to use the interactive job demonstrated at the beginning how to use it.